But just know this, that God has sent a comforter to each and every one of us. To each and every one of us in our time of sadness. So I just want to say, as a church, we're moving forward. As a church, we're moving on. Most importantly, as Pastor Mala would say, we will overtake, we will recover. We will overtake and we will recover as a church. The word that comes to me, and I believe Holy Spirit wants me to flow from what Pastor Sandy has said. How that affects what I prepared then for part two of who am I? Let's allow Holy Spirit to, to, to interject and, and have his way. The word that comes to me is remnant. Always looked at the word remnant and the word remnant as we were taught is not a leftover. It's not a piece that, oh well, this, this is all that's left. You know how we treat the, the items that we have left as if it's like lesser to when it was in bulk or in company. No! Remnant, as we were taught, is actually the strongest part that remains. So our ship has hit a storm. The storm is over, but there's some wreckage. There's some damage. As Pastor Sandy said to me the other day on the phone, there's some mopping up to do. But here's the thing. It's not, well, it's not up to us or Pastor Marlon the day of exit from the body. God knows that. But everything or everybody else that fell overboard or were tossed overboard or I think it's time for me to leave or whatever and God bless your heart whatever it is I just want to say to you today you are the remnant of God you see in Romans 11 
when Paul was reminded about it, about the discussion with Elijah and when he was complaining to God about oh when they killed the prophets and they done this and they done that you see in that time God said yeah but there were 7,000 that didn't bow to Paul I want to say to you that today God can say that there's so many of you that didn't bow to the storm that didn't bow to the water that was trying to fill this boat but you stood your ground and you held on you kept the faith as Pastor Sandy said that same faith when you commit your life to God you kept that faith and you held on to whatever like Paul holding on to a piece of wreckage you're not lost so I want you to give God praise because sitting here today ladies and gentlemen is the remnant of dialogue it's the most powerful part that through the shaking Wadi and Tatum and I we heard an old man in highway radio and he shared on this and I couldn't catch it at that time he shared on this and he said that the remnant is not leftovers the remnant is the strongest part that remains because after a shaking a shaking and everybody goes through a shaking even the remnant goes through a shaking so I can't say they're unshakable they're shakable but they will never break. They shakeable, but they will never fall off. And that's who you are. Do you realize your strength? Hey, do you realize your strength, children of kings? You a son of a king, do you realize your strength? You a remnant. Never forget that. I'd like to take my reading very quickly and I'm gonna rush through this. Um, and let me just say this here, God is having his way in this place. There's nothing Nothing, absolutely nothing that is human coerced. Nothing that is man coerced. God is having his way. I want to say it's an honor and a privilege if you can please turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And we'll begin at verse 9 to 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And we will read from verse 9 to 20. This word is in my heart. Who am I? Who am I? How many of you were here last week? Just by a praise to God. How many of you were here last week? Did you enjoy the word last week? I was blown away when I watched it. Now I apologize for the small glitch we had, but we've got things sorted out. We, we get in there and we're growing. And I'm just grateful that the message was saved. Uh, little illustration that we've done unfortunately didn't make the audio and as a result the media team had to if you noticed the entire uh, demonstration we've done with uh, Marilee and Marcel we, we it, it, it caught on video but not on audio nevertheless God is good amen who am I who am I we come to church week after week and this has been a cry from Pastor Marlon and I didn't hear it <laughs> this has been a cry today we're going to try and find out in 20 minutes who we are I can promise you that today God has got an answer as to who we are can I have the worship team to come in and just assist me with a very quick, a very quick song? Tried to do it last week, but there was so much happening. We're like, nah, nah, nah. And in fact, it was completely blocked out of my mind that we're supposed to do it last week. I got home and I realized, I'm like, oh, we didn't do it. But that's what happens when we allow God to have His way. 1 Corinthians, before we sing, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Can we put that up? So they did not say 9, is it 11? 11. Oh, leave, leave 9, leave 9, leave 9. But as it is written, and I, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for those who love him. One more time I want to say that. I has not seen. I, 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 insight, mind, has not seen. 
No one here heard. No one here. No one's talking about it. But not even saying it. No one here heard. No heaven in, has entered into the heart of man. Of man. The things that God has prepared for those who love him. Let's go to verse 11. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Next verse. Now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit of from who is from God that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Let's go back to the previous verse. For what man knows the things of a man? Can you break that down? For what man knows the things, complete makeup, everything, the things of a man, except the spirit of the man, which is in him. And that's the reading of God's word today. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit in the man? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, eternal and most gracious God, we thank you for your word today. We thank you that this concludes what you started as a basis and formed the foundation of understanding on our quest to know who we are and how much more effective we can be. We're tired of just coming to church as we said. We're tired of just being bench warmers. We want more out of this. The clock is ticking. We're dying every day as we were taught. Every day we're dying. Every day we're getting older. And come to church and we just sit no, we want to know who are we? What have we been called to this earth to do? What have we been called to do? Father, we would hate one day to get to heaven and we've lived a weakling life and we see a superhero, us, spirit man. And we realize that we didn't know who we were. So we ask God that as we begin to understand more about you, Help us to understand the importance of your creation when you created us. And an entire church in agreement said, Amen. Amen. Let's do this.
It's like when you had about like, four weeks of rehearsal. You sound good, man. Just, you don't even realize what we got here, guys. So I sent a, a, a very bad horse recording to Andre and I shared it with some guys, actually, and I'm like, guys, listen to Lauren, we need to do this song. And that's basically what became of it. You see, our efforts with God, mm, our efforts with God is supernatural. You remember what Pastor Martin taught us? Faith is our resolve to perform a heavenly instruction with a natural action, with a supernatural result or end result. Faith is our resolve. Two o'clock in the morning. Faith. Faith. Pastor Martin. Faith is our resolve. Basically, it's our firm stand. It's our resolve to perform a heavenly instruction. Yes, in this earthly bodies. Yes, in this made up bodies. You're wondering about the potatoes. Go forward. In this earthly bodies, faith is our resolve. So, if ever God wants to use you, just say straight, I have resolved in me that I'm not going to look at who I am or anything about me. I'm going to do what God has asked me to do. I know that's easier said than done. If this church makes it hard for me sometimes, I must bring like a teacher, I must bring stuff for us to understand. Thank you, Tato, for these potatoes. Nice ones. <laughs> Next week we'll bring a bunny and I'll um, jump in. In my hand, in my hand I have two what? That was easy. It's going good, huh? Two potatoes, alright? The one on my left is a UTD, now I'm gonna lose the men now. It's a UTD, it's an up-to-date potato. And the one on my right is a firm cooker. Clean, nice skin, beautiful, no spots, no marks, no blemishes, nothing. Very, very nice potato, firm. And this one is a UTD. This one that's got a little crack on it, and it's got some spots, and it's got a, what you call this thing? Like a bunion thing with yes. sprouts or whatever. So I've got two potatoes in my hand, okay? I've got the clean, washed, firm cooker, and I've got the up-to-date potato. Now, I'm going to ask, I'm, I'm not going to ask the men. I'm going to ask the ladies, if you can tell me, is it this one with the mic in my hand that's the better potato, or is it this one? Up-to-date. Up to date. Up to date. Up to date. Uh, men? <laughs> Why are you just saying up to date? Because up to date. No, I didn't say it as well. I'm just going to say it. But you're right. Up to date. Why, but? Would you like to come in? Oh, I'm not going to do that to you. But let's ask the ladies why is this one a bit of a title? Then it's clean, washed, bigger, larger than life, firm, potato. What's the difference between the two? Who would like to actually tell me very quickly? Up to date potato, and it's easier to cook, and it melts, and it soaks the gravy. Yeah. <laughs> so the up to date, it's easier to cook, it melts, and it soaks the gravy. Then you get a nice color in your potato. You know when the color is red? And he's a hey, woman, I tell you, y'all in your curries, is like, hey, hey, my potatoes one, just snow white like that. I use proper curry powder. You know that one that soaks it up, the one that thinks, so are we saying that this ugly looking one that's got scar spots and everything is the better potato? Absolutely. I've had one of these, we're having a pride. Here's my son. We were having a pride. And I had nice big ones, clean ones, everything bought by spa. The spa at the top, watch out. But so those potatoes, was so nice. They look so nice and pretty. 
on the outside. They were absolutely nice. And then I think it was my daughter in law that I said, No, no, make potato salad. I never said, No, when you have a bride, it's a crime if you don't make potato salad in South Africa. <laughs> now, I got it for baked beans with onions and chilies, but I know you've got to make it. Even if I don't eat it, hey, make a potato salad because South Africa. So, we made the South African salad with those nice big potatoes. Clean, nice. And then when it was time for us to start peeling now and making it, we opened, boom, nice rotten spots on the inside. Deep inside, you could see it on the outside. Terrible, like not even grey, dark. A dark spot. Oof, salad gone to waste. Big flop. So, what am I saying here? Stop waiting or looking at, and this is a shouting moment right here. Stop looking at some of us that look saved, look Christian. We got this nice skin on the outside. And we carry ourselves so well. Now there's nothing wrong in carrying yourself, right? Don't get me wrong. But we carry ourselves in such a way. We make it difficult for somebody that just found God, that just found Jesus. Pastor Marlon always spoke about this. We make it difficult. Why? It's because we carry ourselves in a such... You should be supernatural, not superficial. So I'm saying... Maybe we don't have that in our church. Let's talk about it. Maybe it was in some other church. But there's some, some of us that are like those potatoes. We may not have any outside weaknesses or spots or blemishes or whatever. And we look the part. But inside needs some working on. Why am I saying that? I'm saying that to encourage us. That if you feel you just found Jesus. You feel you have a gift. You feel that you, you there's something that you can do for God. You, you remember, Pastor Manu was always boom. He said, but let's go. Because we should always be progressing forward. So, if you're feeling like that potato that's got a scar and it's got a couple spots on it, remember this. You could be an up-to-date. You could be an up-to-date. Where God needs to use you in this time. Paul, three days. Paul, he was Saul. He said, who am I? Who are you, Lord? Change your name from Saul to Paul. Found his true identity. You know, to find something, it means it was lost. So he found his true identity. And his name was redeemed to Saul. You remember last week we shared about Genesis 1 26. And God said, Let us create man. I'm about to tell you. How to understand or find out who we are. How do we know who we are? Last week we heard about the Gadarenes. We heard about the man who was cutting himself. Apologies. We heard about the man who was cutting himself. We heard about how when Jesus delivered this man. You remember that? After Jesus delivered him, the town didn't want him around. They also had a couple of demons in them too. And they said, ay, 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 Jesus. Okay, we see what you've done for him, but please, man, can you... We're trying to have fun here. Have you ever had a moment like that? You must know your spirit, man, is starting to shine out. So how does it work that we can identify or find out who are we? Who are we? Because do you know that it's possible that I've been in church for so many years and still didn't know who I am? So many years, everybody knew who I am, but I didn't know who I am. So today, I want to submit to you that Genesis 1.26, he said, let us create man in our own image, our own likeness, after our own kind. And we learn that Genesis 1.26 is different to the formation in Genesis 2 verse 7. And for those that doubt that, if you look at Genesis 2 verse 1, it says, Thus the history of creation of the heavens and the earth. There was a simultaneous creation in that story. Thus the history of the heavens and the earth were complete. The part that I want to bring home for you today, I believe God wants us to digest. Because I said, God, 
We're recapping on the mail of the gatherings. We're recapping. I sense you saying it's time for us to step up. I sense you saying that there's much more about you than sitting here. But how do I bring this across? And there's a part in Genesis 1.26 that we did not exercise last week because it was part of the main course. Can you put Genesis 1.26 up please? Genesis 1.26, God said, let us all along from the first day, this is day six, all along from the first day, God said, let there be, let there be, let there be, let there be, let there be. When it came to man, he said, let us. Now, apologists, theologians, and scholars, they all want to study and say, who is the us? Who is the us? Was it God and the sons of God? Or was it God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit? Uh, because John confirms that. And I want to say this. The focus is not that. But it's a good study. The focus is that God said, let there be light. Let there be and the firmament and the heavens and the earth and the day and the night and the light to rule over the day and the light to rule over the night let there be, let there be, let there be wait a minute we're making man in our own image and our own likeness do you know who you are? <laughs> there's it after our own our own image and likeness the word likeness from Hebrew back to English means the intrinsic qualities of God. For those that don't understand what intrinsic means, it basically means encapsulated. It basically means protected. It basically means it's power that can go through. For example, you've got a phone on site, guys in engineering. You've got a phone on site and they say, your phone's not allowed on the plot. Why? Because it's not <laughs> known in engineering. Because it's not intrinsically safe. So intrinsically is basically saying, I know how to keep my power within me. That's what intrinsic means. An intrinsic safe phone is a phone you can go into a fuel tank where a little spark will get that whole tank going. But an intrinsically safe phone or torch is an encapsulated device that keeps in any form of spark that could cause a catastrophe on the outside. So the intrinsic qualities of God is, and we made in that, is somebody that knows how to encapsulate your power, knows how to encapsulate who you are. I'm strong, but I won't hit you. Because I'm intrinsic. Are you getting this? I have authority, but I'd rather say grace, because God has had grace on me. He done wrong? No, don't fire him. That's power, that's intrinsic power. Do you understand what I'm saying? What God is saying? Because intrinsic power, or intrinsic characters, is character of power under control. Did you get that? Characters of power under control. Why am I saying this? I'm glad you asked, as Pastor Barlow would say. It's because the next part that we're going to read in Genesis 1.26. Mm -mm, you can read. <laughs> and it says, And God said, Let us make man in our own image according to our likeness. Let them go. From let them. Can we read that together, please? And I'm about to close. Let them have over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, Things that are not as though they are. Didn't Jesus say, 
greater works will you do? Why? Why are you being attacked? There's a calling on your life. Like we found out about the man with the gatherings, at the gatherings. He was from a place called Decapolis. If you go and read Mark chapter 5, that place was called Decapolis. Last week we read from Luke 8. And it's the same story found in Mark chapter 5. And if you read somewhere from around verse 11 or so, you will read there when he said, Jesus, I want to go with you. He said, no, go back to Decapolis. Decapolis in Hebrew means 10 cities. Now we understood why that man was attacked the way he was attacked. And we asked the question, why are you attacked the way you attacked? There's been an assignment on your life from before your birth. If not, why did God say in Jeremiah 1 verse 5? He said, I knew you before you were born. Did God not say that? How can you know somebody that's not there? That's because we were. In the timeless place, we were spirit. Did he not breed Yahweh into man and man became a living being? There was an impartation of God, the spirit in us. In us. Who? Oh, let's get this. So now when he says creating us, he says, let us. God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Because John said in the beginning, was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Do you remember that? John knew who he was because nobody else called him the beloved. This guy. No one else called him the beloved. Only him. Oh, there's John. The one who leaned on Jesus' breast or chest or whatever. He took his position. He was meant. He said, Jesus even said, if I want him to love me, I'll make him. If I don't want him to die, I'll make him. Those kind of conversations when there was a little power struggle with the disciples. Why? Because John was there for the taking. He was there for the knowing. We can't come to church without being here for the understanding or the knowing. And I'm glad we're here today because we want to know who we are. So John the Beloved, he, called, he wrote his book and he called himself the Beloved. Do you, do you know what it's like? It's like saying, you remember when we talked about Pastor Marlon, I said, I'm Pastor Marlon's favorite uh, uh, friend. And then someone else came up, and I felt like, so he also had bunnies with them too. And then somebody else came up, and I'm like, hey, hey, me and Pastor Marlon go for bunnies. I'm like, no, the story is spreading. I'm the beloved. I am his best friend. But you see the heart of God, the heart of Jesus, the heart of God, because Galatians 2.20 says, I don't worry, I'm dancing on tiles, but it's all the same thing. It says, I've been crucified with Christ, yet no longer I live, but the, but the life I live, I now live by the Spirit. Christ lives in me. And look there, Christ lives in me. So with Pastor Mons, there was a facet and a space for each and every one of us. But I'm still, I'm still the favorite. I'm just saying it. You see, so John, when he looked at it, he said, So John the Beloved, can you imagine the others when they were reading like, yeah, check this out. So John the Beloved, so who are you? You are the Beloved. My number plate says favor. I claim it. I go everywhere with the number plate. Is it always favorable? Mm. No. Because circumstances don't define who we are. This is a spiritual connection. Let's not confuse the body and the spirit that God deposited in you. First Corinthians chapter 2 speaks about the super download. Those that uh, saw my WhatsApp status, I said, super download. Why? Because it says no man knows a man except the spirit inside of the man. Are you getting this? Except the spirit inside the man. 126. He says, let us create man in our own image and likeness. And I'm done. And then he says, the team, if you could please come and help me and accompany me. And then he says, and let them, here's the key part. He said, and let them, wait a minute. Let us create man in our own image, inclusion, God included. And then when it came to giving authority, he said, and let them have dominion over all the earth. Now I'm going to say that again 
I'm going to say this again. He said, let us create, God included himself, but then when it came to dominion on earth, dominion on earth, twofold. One, earth, earth, the situation, your atmosphere, your environment, your surroundings, two, earth, your body. And let them have dominion. You. Mouse Monroe blew my mind because I didn't even watch that. After yesterday, I only watched something where you conf where on a little, I'm like, oh, there's it. But Holy Spirit is like that. Holy Spirit will give us the pure, concentrate word of God for us. What do we walk out of here with? We walk out of here with the identity of knowing who you are. Let them have dominion over all the earth. Over all the earth. Does this mean you can always control emotions? No. But it's like what Pastor Sammy did. Took dominion and said, I'm going through something, but I'm going to step out. I'm going through something, but I'm going to move forward. I'm going to press forward. The ship hits a storm, but we're moving forward. You see, this is a spiritual warfare. Paul said we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So let me say this. If God said, let them have dominion. Woo. You have a spirit of God housed in you. There is a battle between the spirit God put in you and the enemy. What do they want, man, brother? Tools. They want your body. Because to be able to have authority on this earth, spiritual things got no authority except through you. No time to go and read it right now. Except through you. All authority has been given to you. Did God not say you are redeemed? Pastor well, Mullen taught us this. Do you know how powerful you are? Hey, you're in charge of earth. <laughs> you're in charge of earth. You have authority. But I'm sick. I have authority. We're in such a financial crisis. But I have authority. Because I go back to this word. God is not a man that he should lie. I'm going to go back here and I'm going to say, hey, wait a minute, God. You said, and let them have dominion. So when we say amen, know your power. Know your power. When you say amen, you say, let it be done. Did Jesus not say, in the hour of all in the prayer, the Lord's prayer, did he not say, as it is in heaven, so shall it be on? As it is in heaven, so shall it be on? Do you know how much authority you have? Your amen is a release. Yeah, get this. Your amen is a release. So when we're standing up here, we're going to watch what we say to you. We can't be saying, hey, judge, one day I can say, oh, the devil really had me this week. Amen. I can't say that. Because what I've just said is the devil really had me, so let it be. What? Did we not talk here about the rudder? From the Lord himself, from Paul. The power, the dunamis, as possible Bible taught us, that dynamite power is the connection between the spirit man in 126, the instruction that God gave in Jeremiah 1.5, and your body. Connect that. And let's just see what it does over the next few weeks. And I'm done. Connect that. Even if it's three people that call it. I want you to know this. If anyone don't get this and it flies over, watch this video. Listen to the audio. It's so important for your positioning. The spirit man inside of you knows all things. He said, I've sanctified you, I've you have. He knows all things. All things. And that super download is in you. How's in this dead body? So spirit plus this body plugged into Holy Spirit. You go from being a globe to being a light. You go from being a globe to a light. 
Never call something that switched off. Switch those lights off, I'm done. Please switch those lights off. That's it. We can, we can stand now. They are so beautiful. Look at you, are so quiet. This is some good stuff. Is that the light switch? Let's please switch it off. What are those up there? Those are globes. Fits, sorry, but... Those are globes. Are those lights? Wait, before you do it. Are those lights? Now they lights. We cannot be globes. You know what's globes? It's not knowing who you are. Sitting with all this power and the enemy knows. But you're not plugged in. If we just plug in, Say, you know what? I'm tired of being a globe. I'm tired of being a globe. I'm watching how things are just running, they're just running ramp in my life, and things are just not working out. Every head bowed, every head bowed, eyes closed. This is a this is a personal moment. This is a personal moment. Every head bowed, eyes closed. There is some stuff in our lives we have no control over. And we need to get control over it. Me included. There are some situations in our homes. We need to take authority. We've tried it in our own strength. It did not work. We've tried the spite game. It did not work. We tried the hated game. It did not work. Our hands have failed us. We want to rule the earth. But we don't realize we need to be plugged in. Because all of this is nothing. It's nothing but a globe. And if we're not plugged into Holy Spirit to say, show me who I am. I have dunamis, I have power. I have the power of God inside of me. I want to know that power. In its fullness and in its glory. So that my life can change. I'm tired. I'm tired. We see God is good, but... Things are not so good at home, and I want them to change. Plug into the power source. You already engineered to win. A globe is already made when you buy it on the shelf in the shop. It's already made to light up. In 126, God already made you to light up. Let's come out of our boxes. Let's put ourselves into a socket called dialogue. wants us to become. For those that don't know that song, Who Am I, that we sang, that we enjoyed so much, was written by our own pastor. At 17 years old, he was a globe. He was a globe. The boat with Jesus on it was still sailing his way. Hadn't reached land yet. That boat was called Boat Sandy. And Sandy was carrying Jesus. Coming his way. God ordained plan. While he was crying on the other side, who am I? Who am I? I'd like to know who am I? Angry. Felt rejected alone. And I'll stop there. But as we know, God allowed both Sandy to reach land. And to the mothership called DCC, gave his heart to the Lord. Didn't even need to listen to what the preaching was because God prepared his heart. And his light switched on. Father God, every head bowed, every eye closed. We lift our heads and we say, God, plug us in. Plug us in. There's much more we can be. We have authority over the earth. You said, let them have authority. So our amens. Heaven can only move if we amen it. Heaven can only move if we instruct it. Because you said, let them have authority over earth. So heaven's waiting when a gush, 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 and like a gush, the Holy Spirit came. Why? Waiting for him to be on one accord. Waiting for us to be plugged in. Help us, God. As we go our way in the street, help us to be plugged in. Help us. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your mind.
mercy and your grace. We thank you for your power. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Thank you, mighty God.